everyone, it's Vanessa. Today I'm here very excitedly to share my Nonfiction November TBR. Of course, Nonfiction November is hosted by Olive and Gemma. I'll link both of their videos down below. This is by far my favorite of all the things that I've ever done booktube related and I'm excited. Again, we'll see how much I end up reading. I have so many things on my TBR that are like possibilities, so I'll kind of tell you what I think will happen and then what will happen if I have a really, really good reading month. I'll start with Macro Micro. For this one, I chose two books, and one of them is Dope Sick by Beth Macy. And this book is about the opioid crisis. It's about dealers, doctors, and the drug company that addicted America. So it definitely focuses on the macro, but there are some vignettes of more micro situations with families dealing with this. I'm on part four of 12. I don't think it's as engaging as I anticipated it to be, mostly because we are focusing on this history of these drug companies and how they kind of infiltrated all of these small towns and how it's beginning to grow as an epidemic. But we'll see if I I keep listening and maybe it'll get more to the present day and more focused on these vignettes. I think that's what I most like to listen to. And then the other book in this category is also macro and this is Bonk, The Curious Coupling of Science and Sex. This is by Mary Roach. I've never read anything by her but she is well known for her science books that are written in ways that are fascinating and engaging and also funny I've heard. And this one is all about sex. She also has one about death and cadavers and that's stiff and I think she has a few more more books. And then for self and shelf, I'm really excited about this category. One book I've been on hold forever for the audiobook. It still says 63 days out, but we'll see. Sometimes people return things um, faster. But I did end up finding the arc of it at my library in the mailbox area for staff, and it's Palaces for the People. I snatched that up real quick. It's how social infrastructure can help fight inequality, polarization, and the decline of civic life. This is by Eric Kleinenberg. This is a book all about how social infrastructure, which Eric Kleinenberg discusses as libraries, as playgrounds, as um, plazas and meeting places in the middle of town, how those make community happen and how that actually helps health and it helps the economy and all other facets. I listened to him on the podcast that Chris Hayes does, I think it's called What is Happening Here or something like that, um, and he was very very fascinating to listen to. He has other really cool books. He did the one with a season, sorry, Modern Romance, so he's very into social history and, and culture. Let's hope but that one's really good. The next book for Self and Shelf really fits both and I'm really excited about this one. I've already started it. The Library Book by Susan Orlean. This is a book all about public libraries but specifically she focuses on the Central Library in Los Angeles that had a big fire in the 1980s I want to say and mostly what we've gathered or what we've learned so far is the importance of that library in when it was founded and also like what it is like today considering it's one of like 70 plus libraries in Los Angeles and it was I think the first and she's just a very good writer. The wonder that you feel when you're inside of a library and kind of like the doors that libraries open up for people. So she she's coming at it from that perspective but then just discussing how we've really forgotten this huge fire that happened in that library and how many volumes were destroyed because of it and it was created by an arsonist too so it wasn't like an accidental fire. So very interesting so far and I'm excited to finish it. For Wonder and Wonder I have two books. One I don't have on me and it's because I put it on hold at the library and then there was only one copy available. That copy has not been turned back in since September 30th. I've been looking like every day. I think it's lost. So I put it on hold elsewhere and now I'm just waiting for that process for that book to finally get to me. It is Stitches by David Small. I discussed in my last video how much I loved his new graphic novel. Stitches is his graphic memoir about his family, dysfunctional family growing up and kind of the medical issues that David had growing up growing up as well. So I'm I'm very intrigued by this one and I hope that I get to it in November. Let's just hope that it arrives sooner or later. And then the second one is Chicken with Plums and this is by Marjane Satrapi. I haven't read anything by her in, in a bit and this one is based off of her uncle's real life in 1958 Tehran and the last eight days of his life before he was, I believe, murdered. Everything by Marjane Satrapi has been wonderful and just so well crafted 
interested. So I'm I'm very, very excited to get to this one and to learn more about her uncle. And for pastime pastime, I picked two books, The Cadaver King and the Country Dentist, A True Story of Injustice in the American South by Radley Balco and Tucker Campton. I've been reading this for a while. I've been reading it on my Kindle because it's not available on audiobook. I've just found it very hard to read the actual text because it's so tiny. Um, so I've been reading it in bigger text on my on ebook. No audiobook, so I have to actually read it. I think I'm about like 30% of the way in, like a hundred and some pages in, but I really want to finish that one. It's all about how these two experts that were used in Mississippi over and over again in autopsies and in testifying for the prosecution put all of these people in jail and prison, and a lot of those cases were kind of botched because of this testimony that was given by these experts who weren't really experts. The Cadaver King was doing like thousands of autopsies a year, and that's like unheard of so obviously he wasn't doing a thorough job and the country dentist he basically started this idea of bite mark analysis for him to be able to tell that a bite mark happened and came from the specific person which is also kind of like not real science so it's looking into how they came to prominence in Mississippi and why they were used so often by um, prosecutors and investigators how that all came crashing down with a lot of exonerations that ended up happening because they were putting people in prison that were not guilty so it's aggravating but very very fascinating and then the other thing that I put for pastime 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 is the destiny of the republic and this is by candace millard and this is a book about james a garfield and his attempted assassination and how he really didn't die from the gunshot he died because the gunshot stayed stuck in his body and they weren't able to take it out and kind of like the medical situation of that time period it's supposed to be a narrative history so it's supposed to keep you on the edge of your seat and it's a very well researched epic in scope and has an intimate human focus on James A. Garfield and other people that were trying to help him, like Alexander Graham Bell. This I got as a recommendation from um, one of the librarians at work. We were kind of exchanging good audiobook narrative nonfiction. She said that one was a really good one. And then uh, other things that I have checked out that I don't really know about. I have Five Days at Memorial by Sherry Fink checked out, which I tried to read a few years ago and I didn't get very far. Um, I thought maybe on audiobook might be better. And that is about New Orleans during Katrina and focusing specifically on that one hospital and the doctors that were there basically deciding who was going to live and who was going to die because of the lack of generators and needed. And then I have a few more on hold. We'll see if they will come in. Under the Banner of Heaven by John Cracker on hold. I have Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker on hold. And I have Heavy by Keith Slateman on hold as well. And when, of course, Michelle Obama's book Becoming comes out, that might be something that I want to read in November. That is all I have. That is kind of like a lot of random stuff. <laughs> we'll end up seeing what happens if things that I put on hold come in or what I end up reading and enjoying and finishing versus what might not keep my attention. But that's a good, I think, set of books to start with. I hope that you enjoyed watching my video. I hope that you enjoy Nonfiction November and I'll be coming back with lots of videos this November of what I've been enjoying and reading. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.